matter of balance, Managing Concerns About Falls is sponsored by Maine Health's Partnership for Healthy Aging. In our younger years, falling down is not usually a serious problem. When our bodies are quick and agile, a fall usually means little more than a quick rush to regain our composure and perhaps a small degree of embarrassment. But as we age, a fall isn't just embarrassing. For some older people, falling down can be incapacitating, both physically and emotionally. It is reasonable to be concerned about falls. A fall resulting in injury can be the beginning of a downward spiral, resulting in such things as isolation and a loss of independence. Studies indicate that between 25 and 50 percent of independently living older adults experience fear of falling. Many believe that restricting activities is a rational response to the very real dangers of falling. Even among older adults who have not experienced a fall, this fear can lead them to restrict their activity. Fear of falling can compromise quality of life by diminishing sense of well-being, limiting mobility, and reducing social interaction. This fear may actually contribute to falling as a result of reduced physical conditioning. So while being concerned may be reasonable, too much fear may compromise physical and mental well-being. Whoa, okay. A matter of balance, managing concerns about falls, is a program that acknowledges the risk of falling, but emphasizes practical coping strategies to reduce this fear. A Matter of Balance, Managing Concerns About Falls is an evidence-based program offered in your community. A Matter of Balance is a program specifically designed to reduce fear of falling and improve activity levels among older adults who have this concern. The program was developed and evaluated by the Roy Ball Center for Enhancement of Late Life Function at Boston University and the New England Research Institutes. Results for those completing the program included a decreased fear of falling, increased confidence, increased activity level and mobility control, enhanced social activity, and increased mobility range. Long-term results included enhanced social activity and increased mobility range. Just take a nice deep breath in. Good, and exhale. A Matter of Balance Good. acknowledges the Again. risk of falling, but emphasizes practical coping strategies to reduce the effects of that fear. It is a structured group intervention consisting of eight two-hour sessions and a variety of activities to address physical, social, and cognitive factors affecting the fear of falling. The class is taught by trained volunteer coaches and participation is limited to no more than 12 people. During the eight two-hour classes, participants learn to view falls and fear of falling as controllable, increasing the belief that one can engage in an activity without falling, set realistic goals for increasing activity, helping to instill beliefs such as greater perceived control, greater confidence in one's abilities, and more realistic assessment of failures, change their environment to reduce risk factors for falls, Promote exercise to increase strength and balance. Class activities include group discussion, problem solving, role play and skill building, assertiveness training, exercise training, videotapes, and practical solutions. Who could benefit from a matter of balance? Anyone who is concerned about falls, has sustained a fall in the past, restricts activities because of concerns about falling, is interested in improving flexibility, balance, and strength, is age 60 or older, ambulatory, and able to problem solve. Deemed safe for a wide variety of people with a wide variety of health concerns, and, um, but they all lead to better physical fitness and better strength and ultimately better balance. All right, And probably that's the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, set our books down, if you will, Set your books down, and I will lead you through a series of exercises. Um, I will start you right off with warm-up exercises, okay? So for that, I'd like you to find a nice, comfortable posture. 
We'll just take a nice deep breath in. Good, and exhale. Good, and an exercise that I like to start off with is just called the good morning stretch. This is a stretch where we try to maintain good posture, but we gently move around just like a cat or a puppy when they wake up in the morning, they go, Ugh. and that just feels so good. Well, I'm more stable on my feet, I think, than I was before. You know, as you grow older, you know that you have, if you have any your wits about you, you realize you're going to have those times when you're apt to fall. And if you're prepared, uh, forewarned is forearmed, they say. So I, I felt that that would be a good program for me. And I feel it was. And um, by doing the exercise and then the balancing, um, I think it made us a little much sure, a bit sure of ourselves. I've seen the results of um, uh, people when they do have a fall and how limited they are uh, thereafter. And uh, therefore I feel I, I would like to know things that I can do to maintain my balance and uh, keep my body um, under control so that I don't fall. As you begin to get older and don't have as good balance, your family begins to worry about you. And lots of times our families are scattered and if they know that you're doing something to improve your balance, it gives them peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Another confidence point. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 2003, the Administration on Aging launched a three-year public-private partnership to increase older people's access to programs that have proven to be effective in reducing their risk of disease, disability, and injury. Working in partnership, Southern Maine Agency on Aging, the Partnership for Healthy Aging, Maine Medical Center Division of Geriatrics, and the University of Southern Maine School of Social Work proposed to translate a matter of balance to a volunteer lay leader model. The purpose of the grant is to evaluate whether a volunteer lay leader model is successful and cost effective and to develop a toolkit to share this approach with others in Maine and around the country. Program adaptations have included volunteer coach training, the development of a participant workbook and satisfaction tool, modifying the exercise component, and including a visit from a health professional to the class. I took a matter of balance class the early part of last year, and I was so impressed, I immediately said to the ladies that were coaches, how do I become a coach? And before you know it, I was a coach. And I've coached three classes, this is my fourth class, and I just feel we're doing such a wonderful job for older citizens, helping them realize that you have to keep moving. The lifeline one says if you're falling forward, brace yourself, but make a wide stand. Yeah. So you come back. Okay, you're going to go sideways, either side. Brace yourself when you're falling. Same way with back. There is a sense of, of, of liftedness when they, when they leave the class. They're, they're, they're wanted to keep going, you know. And one of the challenges is that we find with this group is that they're in a place of wanting to continue something, keep the, keep the ball rolling, and um, we are encouraged and are actually challenged to find ways that they can then implement this into their lives and continue in some way, either in a group or a personal exercise plan or a way to continue to um, learn and grow and feel empowered in their life. Participants who have completed the class report that they are more comfortable talking about fear of falling and in increasing activity. They also plan to continue exercising. Research outcomes include statistically significant improvement in fall control and management, exercise, and social activity. Changing attitudes and behaviors is the primary goal of the program. A matter of balance places a strong emphasis on changing behaviors that are certain to make an already difficult situation worse. Um, and I guess just kind of get a sense from you of what you think being assertive is. Volunteer. Volunteer, okay. Speaking up. Speaking up. Asking Even questions. when you have a tickle. Asking Sorry. questions. Asking questions, great. 
standing up for yourself. Standing up for yourself. I think it's right. a fine yeah. line between being assertive and aggressive. Sometimes, um, if you are always assertive and making sure everybody hears you, hears you, hears you, that can come off as aggressive. Oh, yeah. But being clear about things and about how you feel about things, that is really more about being assertive. What about being assertive with your doctor? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. When can't you? Well, when you feel that he's about had it. <laughs> How about when you had it with him? Yeah. 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 I think that happens yeah. more often. Yeah. Well, that's true, but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you think you oh, yeah. have kind of overdone that. When I take another fall and I say, oh boy, he isn't going to want to see me. <laughs> I'm not going to be assertive. I'm going to think I'm okay and I'm going to be okay. Oh, and you usually are. I don't like bleeding, telling the doctor everything. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you can't have any secrets. Yeah, you can have a few secrets. But when it comes to your, to your emotional health, your mental health, um, your, your medical health, social yeah. health, all these things really are the doctor's concern. What about, um, one of the things, asking questions, what about asking for help? Are you sort of when it comes to asking for help? Well, a lot of people are hesitant to ask for help. They're embarrassed to, I mm -hmm. think. Embarrassed to be uh, even uh, needing the help? Being de dependent on somebody mm -hmm. else, or they don't want to make a bother of themselves. That's right, mm -hmm. Helen. That's okay. exactly right. Don't want that label of somebody who constantly yeah. needs help or being a nuisance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, about the other person, you don't want to bother the other person, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. You can help that. I use my cane walker or other pieces of adaptive equipment as prescribed by my doctor or therapist. I use a grab bar when I get in and out of the tub or shower. Do your apartments have grab bars? It's great that they're there. Handrails um, here, here, and, and over here can be used um, to help getting in and out of the tub and for studying. Um, one thing we talked about was um, not storing medicines in the medicine cabinet in the bathroom because of um, the moisture and the heat that can be generated from the shower. So the suggestion is to put them in the kitchen um, where they're much easier to see okay. and to use. Well, I like you know the fact that you have a lot of space yeah. um, to take your medicines. You can get water from the sink, bring it over here. You've got a light, an extra light, so yeah. that you can read yeah. the labels very clearly. Yeah, you can read your insulin syringe very clearly. Yeah. And if you needed to reorder medicines, your phone is right yeah. here, your calendar is there, extra so you can check off that yeah. you've taken your medicine. So this is a much better system yeah, to do that's this That's what way. I was doing this morning, reordering some. Mm -hmm. i got to get more of the... Well, well, well that's an you important point right? that oh, you yes. know about. So yeah. you have a light right as you come in the... Oh, you get yeah. a permit. In your bedroom well, yes. so that you can reach and turn it off. Like that. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a hazard um, because well, if you were to go and reach for it, 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 it'll move right along with you. It certainly does. It, it's an easy roller. So those are just a couple of little hints yes, that, yes, that certainly I had to give you some. We yeah. had to have a couple of things to look at. Yes. One recommendation we did have, the bottom of the tub is texturized. Um, but I still think that, that that has a potential of being too slippery. It's hard to tell unless you feel it. So a rubber mat in there would be helpful. And having things in the corners so that they're not um, in your path of walking. The rugs have a texturized rubber backing, so they're not a slip rug, and otherwise it's well lit. Because of advances in healthcare and better nutrition, more and more people are living longer than ever before. 
the aging of the baby boom generation is going to require more widespread preventive care than is currently available. For those who care about maintaining quality standards of living, a matter of balance is one sure-footed step in the right direction. Don't hesitate to go. Don't hesitate. It's very, very helpful and very informative. Don't feel that you shouldn't go because you might be feel that you're getting old or that sort of thing. We just have to face that we are getting old and we need help and why not take it? I have found the balance program to be very helpful, especially in improving my mental attitude toward the matter of falling. The instructors were outstanding and the classmates were terrific. I have begun to exercise and look forward to a walking program. I've also increased my assertiveness. I seem to be more aware of every situation for my safety. I now stop, look, and listen to my surroundings. I never hurry anymore. I love the balance class. It showed me that you must exercise every day to keep living a healthy life, and I plan on making it to at least 100. I moved groceries to different shelves. I make more trips carrying smaller amounts from car to kitchen. This class has made me more aware and more confident. A matter of balance program made me realize that I'm responsible for me raised my self-esteem.